Hello and welcome to The Flow, which contains the process of personal transformation and evolution. Jesus suggests when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, and also recommends when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners, that they may be seen by others. All you need do is more than likely what Jesus did. Sit quietly to enter into the flow of God and all nature and all love and all peace. Let's move to our Washing Away the Week segment. If you wish, you can press pause on the video and go over to the sink and wash your hands along with the video. I wash my hands. I now wash my soul of the past week. I wash away the times I refuse to live in the now. I cleanse fear which keeps me from truths about myself and others. I remove the stain of the false self placing my importance over and above the greater good. I wash away the belief that everything must be explained or understood. I cleanse nightmares of the past, knowing that failure is a byproduct of growth. I bathe in the reality that God is love, fullness, and joy. I dry my hands feeling God's simple smile, and that is good enough. In order to love God and neighbor, First, learn to love dirt. This week, if you can, pick up some dirt and hold it in your hand. Consider how it supports the foundation under your feet. Think about how typical dirt can be transformed into soil which brings life to flowers, trees, and crops. Enter into a loving relationship. In order to love God and neighbor, first learn to love dirt. Contemplation is the highest expression of a person's intellectual and spiritual life. It is that life itself, fully awake, fully active, fully aware that it is alive. It is spiritual wonder. It is spontaneous awe at the sacredness of life, a being. It is gratitude for life, for awareness, and for being. It is a vivid realization of the fact that life and being in us proceed from an invisible, transcendent, and infinitely abundant source. Contemplation is, above all, awareness of the reality of that source. It knows the source, 
obscurely, inexplicably, but with a certitude that goes beyond reason and beyond simple faith. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. How did you feel hearing this passage? What might the narrative say about you? What made you feel comfortable or uncomfortable? As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. What word or phrase spoke to you? Why did this word or phrase speak to you? What is the spirit trying to say? No, Jesus is not talking about the end of the world, but it's a good plot for a movie or for a minister to try and scare people in the name of job security. 
But what Jesus is talking about is the scariest thing imaginable, change. And to make things scarier, change as a paradigm shift as well. Important buildings are built of stone. Metaphorically, he's suggesting that when this great paradigm shift takes place, institutions and ways of thinking we once thought as the status quo will no longer be viable as society has evolved into a new way of thinking, a new way of living and being. Jesus then warns, and I think we have seen this supported throughout history, that there might be people who claim to have all the answers, who say they can solve any of the ills of society, that there are simple answers to complex problems. These leaders will say that they can save the world, but in reality will lead many astray because their answers rest in self-serving, maniacal behavior with narrow, clouded, binary thinking, dividing people in the process. You will also hear phrases like, if you don't support me, then you're the enemy. You see, Jesus calls us to be better than we think we are. And as we struggle and moan and groan during the beginning of birth pangs, this will bring about a new consciousness and a new paradigm for living. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is just the beginning of the birth pangs. In out-of-the-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered, heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight when your courage kindled. And out you stepped onto new ground. Your eyes young again 
with energy and dream. A path of plentitude opening before you. Though your destination is not clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease and risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm for your soul senses the world that awaits you. May the God of love bring us all joy. May the cosmic Christ enable empathy and understanding. And may the spirit of truth open our eyes to the wonders of each encounter. Let us walk in love. Let us go in peace.